Thank you. It's my first time to this meeting, but my second time to Israel. The first time I came was all about places, and I'm delighted to say this time has all been about working with people. I went to the hackathon, and it's been a real delight to get to know and work with Israelis. And so I want to start us today. I'm going to talk about cyber learning, and I'll tell you in a bit what that is. I have a map where I'm from. Uh, I'm from Palo Alto in California. But first, we've had a, a, a big start today with lots of technology. And what I'd like is for everyone to take a deep breath and think about learning. Imagine, recenter yourself. Let's recenter what is learning. Let's do that. Deep breath. <laughs> OK, in my hackathon group, we didn't start with technology. We started with images of what learning might look like. And these are some images that stimulated us and inspired us. Places of learning. Also, children and all the different ways they might sit and work together. By the way, notice they're not all smiling so much as they do in the corporate advertising. They're working hard here. So imagine, imagine what learning really looks like. And the reason I say that is when we think of what's going to be a good technology, what would be good for our children, it really all depends on what we think learning looks like. And therefore, the, imagine we, the imagination we're most limited by and the imagination we need the most is not imagination of technology and what it'll be and what it'll do. It's imagination of what learning can look like. We need to reimagine what learning is. How will children learn? So let me tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, this is one, my job at SRI right now. I run something called the Cyber Learning Center. Our National Science Foundation is funding this area called Cyber Learning. It's 150 different <laughs> projects. And I have the, the fortune to sit, on, sit over these projects and create a community among them to help all the leaders of these projects come together and discuss what are the issues. You can go to this website. Later, I'll, I'll show you the address. And it has a lot of really good information and, and very inspiring projects. But the theme, now I want to tell you what cyber learning is. The theme of cyber learning is an intertwining that really to advance in what we're doing for children and in schools, we need to intertwine two things. We can only advance with technology as far as we advance in our science of learning. And so these two things, like the double helix, must go together. And since we've heard so much about technology today, my stories will be about learning. So this is cyber learning. It's this attempt to have a disciplined intertwining and not to let go of the other strand, not to become so uh, infatuated with the possibility of technology that we forget about the possibility of learning. So what do we know from the learning of sciences? Well, first and foremost, it's what children do that decides what they learn. And so I want to tell a story. This story is from very early in my own career. Uh, I was a student at MIT, and I entered this field of educational technology because I was inspired by Seymour Papert. Have we all read this book? Many people have read this book? Yeah. And it was about, Seymour Papert was incredibly inspiring. And it was about children and computers, but most importantly, Seymour and Papert was about children having powerful ideas. How did children come to own a powerful idea? And so I was inspired by Seymour, and as an undergraduate student, I had to go see it for myself. And so I went out to the school to see Logo and to see the turtle in use. And here's the famous thing they were doing. They were making a square. Here's some simple code for making a square. And I walked into the classroom. I'm very idealistic. I'm young. And I want to see the magic. And what do I see? The teacher says, now class, first find the letter T on your keyboard and press T. Now find the O. Press O. Now you need a space. It's that long bar. Find the long bar and push it. So what are the students learning in this activity? This isn't a mathematics class. This isn't having powerful ideas. It became a typing class. And they were just learning how to type on a keyboard. And I think this story is very important for us to keep in mind. 
because I actually I want to talk about the story in a second, but before I go on, I just want to point to the picture from the first edition of, uh, of Seymour Papert's book. Because we're going back to the future. We started before screens. We started beyond screens. There's no screen there because screens weren't part of educational computing in the, build, in the beginning. There were teletype machines. There were robotics because there's a turtle. That's a, that's a robot turtle that moved on the floor and had a pen and it drew on paper and we had augmented reality. We had the kids drawing on paper and the turtle drawing on paper, both. So in a way, we're, everything's going back. It's where we started. Okay, so learning depends on the activity of the learning and I think this is important, for example, with all the examples of Maker, which I love, I love Maker. But I worry with Maker, too, that when it comes to our classrooms, what happens if the teacher turns it into a typing class and turns it into a recipe and focuses on, we have to make this thing. We only have one class period. We only have 45 minutes. We have to make something, so I'll tell you the instructions. First you do this, then you do this. And then this personal part that Dale talked so much, so eloquently about, it would be lost. It would be another typing class. And so this is why it's so important. We have to have the image of learning first and foremost. What is it going to look like when children are learning? Not what technology they are using, because this has to guide every step. Everything we do has to be based on an activity, and the activity has to be about learning. And if we don't change the activity, in fact, I'm doing this right now, and it reminds me of the page turning. So this gesture is very natural, but if what we do in our AR is to turn pages, the learning will be the same. If what we do is grab molecules and, and build build new ways of doing chemistry, that would be different. And so we have to be careful. What is the activity? How is the learning activity different? And how will we support teachers and learners in this new activity? OK, I'm trying to keep it short. And I just want to go through a couple other principles we know from the learning sciences. The learning sciences is an interdisciplinary area. It has come together over the past 25 years or so. It has, come to, it has come together in the age of technology. So these principles help us with technology. Learning as we know, it's social. It's a very important principle. And so kids are always working together. But just telling a group of children, go work together, does not produce great collaboration always. So how do we structure things? How do we make the activity so students really share ideas? So they form arguments. So they explain to each other. So they ask each other questions that push, push each other further. How do we do that? How do we make the technology support a really true process of collaborative learning where children's minds deeply engage? It's a big challenge. Also, we know from the learning sciences that people learn best when they're able to use different representations simultaneously for the subject matter. My area is in mathematics learning, and if any of you want to talk at lunch or afterwards about mathematics learning, I'd love to, to talk about that. I'll just show an example here of how we do multiple representations. When we try to teach kids the meaning of an algebraic equation, this is what we connect. First of all, we have motion. We have, in this case, a soccer player running across a field. It's very important that stories are part of learning. So we have kids telling stories about motion. We have them making graphs that show the motion, tables of numbers, and also algebraic equations. And what mathematics is, it's not any one of these things individually. To understand mathematics is to know the connections, to know how it is these things relate. And so technology can give us ways to engage kids around multiple representations. And that's a principle we know from the learning sciences. If I can say just a bit more about that, two kinds of connections are really important between representations. On the one hand, between narrative, story, and on the other hand, between visual representations, that's very important. And the second dimension that's so important is between the familiar and the more symbolic. So this is our challenge. How do we create learning experiences that connect stories and pictures and connect the everyday and the symbolic? and enable children to see the meaning among these. Okay, we saw that one already. And, and my last point, there's many principles in the learning sciences that I didn't want to do it all for you. It would be too long. There's many places you can go to learn. But learning always occurs in some situation. 
And we have to be clear and articulate about the resources are for learning in that situation. And technology is just always one factor. Uh, at SRI, one of the things we do is we study which learning technologies are effective. And we study this in science, we study it in math, we study it in English, we study young children, we study old children, everything. And if there's any one lesson that pops out of all those different things is when people insert technology as a single element, you never see an effect. It's only when they understand everything about the situation, the teacher, what's on paper, the physical room, and they think through the connections that we're able to measure an effect from learning. So understanding this whole situation, that technology is just a piece within it, is super important. And figuring out how to tie that together and make it coherent for the teachers and usable and make it fit the reality of you have 30 students, you have a limited time, you have a time of day. How do you draw upon that? And so this is where I'll end. If we're going to go beyond the screen, where do we start? Well, I think we have to start with thinking really deeply about what will our images of learning be. And I think going on beyond the screen is incredibly natural because learning started be without the screen. So it, it shouldn't be so hard, but we have to be very articulate. What do we think learning is going to look like? And we have to hold those images up and we have to hold them close to ourselves as we enter technology and not let them go. And include the learning sciences, because what the learning sciences gives us, of course it's a science and it can be hard to read and it can be academic, it can be scholarly, but at the end of the day it gives us a vocabulary, it gives us a way to talk about what's important. And here are some of the things I've, I've emphasized. That we have to be able to talk about the activities of the learner, what they're doing, how the learner is social and collaborative, how we are helping learners connect to form relationships between different ways of representing the same idea, and that how we're seeing learning as a complete situation. So those are four principles. Well, thank you very much. This is how you can reach me. And if you want to learn more about cyber learning, it's circlecenter.org. It has no E notice in circle. And that's where you can find a lot of information about what's going on with, with cyber learning. Thank you. Thank you.